In Jesus' name, amen, amen. My scripture will be coming from Acts, from the book of Acts 19, 1 to 7, in the New King James Version of the Bible. And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul had passed through the upper region and came to Ephesus and finding some disciples he said to them did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believe so they say to him we have not so much at her whether there is a Holy Spirit and he said to them into what then were you baptized so they say into John baptism then Paul say John indeed baptized with a baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him whom come after him that is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hand on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and spoke with tongues and prophesied. Now the men were about 12 in all, I have read Act 19, 1 to 7. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God, I thank you for the word that's coming forth, that your spirit will lead and guide and speak through me. Lord, I have asked you to have your way. I decrease, that you increase. Saturate me in your love, your spirit. Have your way this day, Lord. It's in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Oh, glory be to God. My title is, Have You Received the Holy Spirit Since You Believe? You know, a lot of people haven't received the Holy Spirit since they believe. You know, Paul, he was passing, and he went up to the coast, and he went to Ephesus, and he found certain disciples and you know he began to hang around with them you know it was a group of disciples and apostles and so he was hanging around them and then he noticed something about them in their ways that it sh that you know it was different and you know they were supposed to be disciples but it, he noticed something about them so he asked them you know, have you received the Holy Ghost whether they believe in the Spirit? That who operate, you know, the Spirit, the, the Holy Ghost, if they, he's operating in the Spirit and he changes the mind of men and, and to give you conviction and conversion and comfort. See, they believe in the Son of God and a lot of times people accept God but then they don't finish the whole thing. They don't receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And so, you know, the Holy Spirit, he's our comforter. And, you know, when you ask somebody, sometimes when you ask a person, have you received the Holy Spirit? It just does something to them. They don't really know if they received the Holy Spirit or not. Yeah. You know, you can ask them, are you saved? And they'll say, yes, I'm saved. But if you ask them, have they received the Holy Spirit? It's a pause in there. And then they say, they, they might say, yeah. But see, you have to answer, you have to say that with confidence, affirmative, you know, that you know for surety that you have received the Holy Spirit. And when you receive the Holy Spirit, it won't be about you. It'll be about the Lord speaking through you. <clears throat> You are an empty vessel, and God will speak through you and use you. 
but you have to know for surety that you do have the Holy Spirit once you, you know, ask God to come into your life. And this was not all, you know, the gift of the Holy Spirit was conferred upon apostles and the other disciples after Christ's ascension, which was frequently repeat upon occasionally. And had they participate in these gifts? Hmm? Have they participate in it? Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Have you had that seal of the truth? It's like a seal. God has sealed you in him. Have you received that seal of truth, of Christ's doctrine in yourself? Second Corinthians say, in 2 Corinthians 1, 22 say, Who had also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our heart. And then Ephesians 1, 13. It says, In whom ye also trust, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believe, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. When you accept the Holy Spirit in your life, it's a seal and no man can take it away. Now this concerns all of us who profess the Christian faith to inquire whether we have received the Holy Spirit. There's a lot of church going on around here and there is acting on self. It's not the Spirit. They just stopped. They just got part of it. It's not letting God use them. They're doing off self. And it's about self. It's all about self. You know, the Holy Ghost is promised to all believers. In the book of Luke eleven thirteen. If ye then, being evil, known how to give good gift unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Amen. So you have to ask, you know, for the Holy Spirit and have an open heart to receive the Holy Spirit in you. You know, they, they are pretenders to the gift of the Holy Spirit. You know, you have some people that are pretender, act like they got the Holy Spirit. So they are to his grace and comfort. We should therefore strictly examine ourselves. Examine ourselves. Are we acting on our own impulse? Or are we acting or leave, being led by the Spirit of God. Have we received the Holy Ghost since we believe? Once you believe, that conviction should come on upon you so you can receive the Holy Ghost. You can't do anything. You can't go too far without, not too far, you can't go far without having the Holy Spirit in you. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit leads and guides you. And the Holy Spirit, well, he have multiples of uh, attribute. The tree will be known by its fruit. Do we bring forth the fruit of the spirit? You know if you want to know a person look at their fruit. You can look at the kids. You can look at their fruits. How they acting. Are we led by the spirit? Do we walk in the spirit? Are we governed are we under the government of the spirit? Amen. They own their ignorance in this matter, whether there be a Holy Ghost. You know, when Paul asked them, they didn't know it was a Holy Ghost because <laughs> of ignorance. Who is the Holy Ghost? The Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit is a member of the Trinity. The triumph God that magnifests as Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Each have an expert itself being God. Some of the name of the Holy Spirit. He's our comforter. He comforts you in the time of your need. When you need him, he comforts you. He's your counselor. I mean, you don't go have to pay somebody to counsel you. You know, with the veil been ripped, you go to the Holy Spirit. He's in us. He counsels you. He's our advocate. He will speak through, through us. We don't have to have all these millions of paper and books and stuff. And the comforter, he, he's our advocate. When you go to court or when you are in school or whatever, you know, 
He can speak through you. You can ask God, Father God, you be my advocate in this this courtroom. Because you don't want to know you don't want to know what the judge what he gonna say. God will speak through you. He'll speak through that judge. Amen. He's our convictor of sin. You know, when you do something wrong, he convict you. He's our deposit. Deposit? Yeah, he's our deposit. Deposit is a gift to believer. He gave a down payment on our Heavenly Father inheritance, which Christ promised us as secure for us at the cross. Amen. He's our seal. Seal? Seal is the spirit has sealed us that we are sure of our salvation. No one can break the seal of God. Amen. Ain't that good knowing that we are sealing God, that our name is written in the Lamb book of life, and that we have eternity with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, you know what? This book, Act, is a powerful book. Matthew, it talks about the resurrection. Mark can talk about the ascension. Luke can talk about the promise of the Holy Spirit. John can talk about the promise of the second coming. But in all, Act 1 bring all four of them together. And it's the great missionary commission given in the four gospels confirmed in Acts. The Spirit come upon you when laying of hands. When you open your heart to Jesus Christ. There's no other way. When you open your heart up to Jesus Christ, you got to want it. You got to have a heart for the Holy Spirit. And boy, when you have the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you, you're on, you on the road. You're on the road. And he'll lead you. He'll tell you not to be around people. He'll tell you to go this way. He'll tell you some stuff that you might not even like to hear your own self. You know, John baptism. When he was baptizing people, he was, do, he was preparing the way for the Messiah. Christian baptism is the celebration of the Messiah. Amen. Amen. And in the book of 1st Chronicle, Corinthians, excuse me, 12, 13, we were baptized into, we were baptized into the body of Christ. By one spirit, we are baptized in, in, in one body. It's no two, it's no three. By one spirit, it's the other spirit, they not of God. You better let it go. And when, you, when you're in the spirit, you emerge into the body of Christ. Jesus baptized you too in the spirit. Amen. Sometimes people have so much pride. When you ask them a question like that, when you ask them, have you received the Holy Ghost? You know, sometimes people will be embarrassed, but that's the trick of the devil. You know, they might lie to you too. And you know what? They'll miss out. They might keep on doing it. They'll miss out because they don't have a habit of saying, yes, they receive it where they haven't received it and be the miss out on the kingdom of God. Have you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Listen very careful for the respond. Your spirit. We'll bear, bear witness when you ask a person that. It, it, they'll have a pause, hesitation, uh, you can hear the, in their voice. It is impossible to follow God unless we are led by the Spirit. The only way to be led by the Spirit is to follow God's command, to be filled by the Spirit. In Ephesians 5.18, being filled with the Spirit when you become filled with the Spirit, you'll be drunk. You'll be drunk in the Spirit. And I'm not talking about alcohol. You'll be drunk in the Spirit. You'll do some things, and people probably think you are weird, but you are drunk in the Spirit. Oh, what a good feeling that would be. And a person that who is drunk in the Spirit is controlled in the Spirit. They're consumed in the Spirit by the Spirit. Who help us live a holy life. You know that spirit. Living in the spirit. And the spirit being on us. We'll live a holy life. Not a self-centered life. It all about us when we live a self-centered life. Because a lot of people living in this world. Is living a self-centered life. 
you know, they got their own way of living. And when they accomplish stuff, or something go their way good, they self-centered. I did this. You know, they led by their own self. How are we filled with the Spirit? The Holy Spirit into you when you decide to give your life to Christ, to become a Christian. But we need to continually ask the Holy Spirit to lead us and to guide us, to help us do the things God want us to do. When we were growing as Christ Christian, we should allow the Spirit to take over more and more area of our life. You know, we have to let the Spirit take over our life. We'll be like almost like in a trance because we are walking the Spirit of the Lord and He'll lead and He will guide us. In John 14, 15 to 27, and in John 16, 5 to 15, in Romans 8, 1 to 17, these are some passages, you know, verses, you know, of the Holy Spirit that plays many roles in our life. And, he, and there's many, many more verses, you know, because he bring the promise that the Spirit bring us peace. And in Galatians 5, 22, 23, this is a good one. If you want to really know how a person, how they are being led, or if that person is of God, you know, it's all about their heart, what come out of their heart. You know, you know, they, you don't want any kind of, I mean, with harsh words and all kind of stuff come out their heart, that's their fruit coming out. Your fruit, the fruit of the spirit is love. You ever see people sad all the time? The fruit of the spirit is joy. You, you ever see people scared or, or something's wrong in their life, you can look at their face? The fruit of the spirit is peace. You ever see a person not patient, always in a rush or hurry or something, don't have time? Fruit is patient. You ever see somebody so rough, harsh to other people, not loving them? Fruit of the Spirit is kindness. It's goodness. A person that is not faithful, that's not other fruit. The fruit of the Spirit is faithfulness. You also have to be gentle. Gentleness. And you got to have self-control. If you ain't got that self-control, I don't know what kind of person you are. And all these are evident, or these are evident in your life. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep step with the Spirit. I pray that as you take these steps each day, it will bring you close to God and to live in the kind of life He wants us to live. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believe? And you can ask a person that. Oh, you ought to ask a person, are oh, you a believer? You know, they might be neither one. You know, there might be people in the church, they probably act like they're full of church people are saved and fill up with the Holy Spirit. But why are you arguing? Why are you doing this this way? Why you, why you have love? Why you don't want that man come up here and he's homeless to sit in the front row because he smells? You have to have love and compassion for people. You can tell a person, a pastor, pastor the people that's in God, by their lack of spirit the dynamic. You know, they don't have anything that look like Christ but the world. Amen? We have to be a believer possess a great excitement, enthusiasm for the Lord, for others. And we have to meet some Christian who is, ve you, you, I know you have met some Christian that are dull, no dynamic, no life, nothing, right, nothing. They show no real love for spiritual things. They can go to a baseball game, a football game, and you say, you look, they don't act like that in church. <laughs> That's the world. Have you received the Holy Spirit? Why have you been doing lately? Could, could generate or expose, explosion of uh, excitement? 
have you received the Holy Spirit? Now see the disciples, they didn't receive it. They had an opportunity. Some received and some may not. Some did happen. But you can tell when a person has the Holy Spirit in them. The Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you. The Holy Spirit don't talk all kind of other off the wall stuff or talk about something on TV, the reality shows and then another time you're talking a little bit about God, but most of your life you're talking about the world. You have to be serious about the Lord. God wants vessels on this earth to be used by him. He wants his spirit to use you, to lead you, guide you. And without his spirit, you can't get far at all. You will have fear on what you're doing. The Holy Spirit is boldness. You can go into a gang or in an alley. And that Holy Spirit there is right there with you. You can be that close to being scared. you know, But the Holy Spirit will protect you. Have you had the Holy Spirit since you believe? Think about this. And this concludes my word for today. And I pray that you all got blessed. Thank mm -hmm. you.